Hi guys, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching me, depending on your time zone. Now today, the Ford Kenya Party leader, Senator Masika Wetangula, was on an interview with the three Luya radio stations. So that means Mlembe FM, Sulu FM, and Vuka FM. And there are three things Wetangula has clarified in that interview. That number one, yes, they had a meeting with President Uhuru Kenyatta on Saturday morning, at State House, a breakfast meeting. Then number two, like how the newspaper published that Gideon Moy by quarter that meeting, it was fake. Moy was part and parcel of that meeting. So for that reason, all the one Ken Alliance principals attended the meeting. Msalem Davadi, Gideon Moy, Masikawa Tangula, and Kalonzo Musioka. Then number three, he is saying that all the one can alliance principles, those four of them, whenever they have a meeting, all of them are contribu contributing money on table before going for the meeting, i.e. the Kakamega meeting. So I want you to shortly listen to Senator Masika Tangola. Then after that, there is a number of questions we want to answer on this platform. Gideon Moy, Atanabone Mui Kaseti, well, the meeting in the president, and we had a meeting with the president on Saturday morning we had a breakfast meeting as Oka. Nabone Mui Kaseti Val Gideon Moy boycotted. Far from the truth. We were all of us. And we had a good breakfast meeting. We talked uh, matters of state, matters of stability of the country and uh, many other things. And we finished there. Hwa Malabula Ibs. Enyoweko Magazeti Muandika Vindu Tofaut. Thirdly, any time we have an Oka meeting, Omundu nyo anga kwanja mangu the principles ya vejanga gidi yon moi. Nekwe mekuli saa tatu saa mbili na 45 wabaliyo. That is not the behavior of some bodul ni sikili sila leisi ndi itawe. Mm -hmm. Number three. A story mbo musalia nende kalonzo wa nakondola nanga. Again, it is hogwash. Sikila, these are all my very close friends apart from being uh, in the same political formation with me. We've worked with musalia for many years. Kalonzo has been my friend from 1985 long time ago when we were very young lawyers there is absolutely no rift or no tension between Salia and Kalonzo. Again this is a creation of the media. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what the media is doing. It's called provocative journalism. <laughs> now the question we are asking ourselves today on this platform is what is President Uru Kenyatta's game plan with the One Kenya Alliance and his Mount Kenya Region allies who have been seen closely working with the ODM leader Raila Amono Dinga. But before we go deep into that discussion, I have a quick reminder. You might be watching me, but you have not yet subscribed. Please consider subscribing so that another time, once we come out with a video like this one, you will always get notified. Again, to all the returning subscribers and anyone, anyone who dropped a comment, I must say thank you so much for your unconditional support. Again, let us give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube is going to recommend our video to more viewers. Back to our discussion. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta's hand is openly seen in one Kenya alliance and Raila Molo Odinga's camp through his allies who are even working closely with the Raila Odinga. Look at the kind of vehicles these guys are using. Kalonga Musioka, Msalem Davadi, Senator Masika Wetangul and Raila Molo Odinga. Look at the number plates. It tells you the sequence. So Uhuru is all over all of these guys. And uh, there is one thing that I feel Uhuru want to make sure that it goes through before he gets out of power. Number one, Uhuru want to force Mount Kenya region in Raila Molo Dinga's government by offering a running mate to Raila Molo Dinga, a deputy president slot for Mount Kenya region. Despite the fact that he understand Mount Kenya region cannot have enough vote for Raila Molo Dinga. So how does he approach this? It is still understood that Uhuru is the one who engineered the formation of the One Kenya Alliance. So it's to let One Kenya Alliance go all the way to the ballot. And then that will give a chance to Uhuru Kenyatta to offer a running mate to Raila Molo Dinga from Mount Kenya region. Because if you have One Kenya Alliance here with Raila, they are negotiating 
and then you want to force a running metrail amolo dinga from Mount Kenya region, of course it will backfire. Because where do you leave Kalonzo Musioka and Msalem Dabad? <laughs> where do you leave these two? So for that reason, is to make sure that one Kenya alliance will stay all the way to the ballot, but as a coalition. And then Raila will have a chance to choose his running mate from Central Region. If they will manage to give him one million votes, better. But again, another plan here is to make sure that in as much these people are running, one Kenya Alliance and Raila Odinga, then William Samai Root, of course there will be no a winner in that election. So the next step is to have a runoff. For that reason, Uhuru is hoping that Raila Amolo Odinga might become the first, if not second. So, that way alone will bring back the One Kenya Alliance team and Raila Amolo Odinga back on the negotiating table. So already Raila Amolo Odinga has a running mate, he cannot change. And then One Kenya Alliance, they come here, they will now be negotiating for slots. Msalem Dabadi, I'm coming here to give you a backing. But how many ministerial positions are you offering to ANC party? Same to Kalonga Musioka, Gideon Moy, and Senator Masika Betangul. So Raila will decide how many slots he's going to give. Maybe half of his cabinet is going to be given to the One Kenya Alliance. And his other half is going to be shared between Raila Molo Dinga and the his running and his running mate from Mount Kenya region. That might be the first game plan that Uhuru Kenyatta has. But of course, if not, there is no way the Mount Kenya region can found themselves in Raila Amolo Dinga's government. Because with Kalonga Musoka and Msalem Davadi, Senator Masika Wetangula, Raila Amolo Dinga can win election. In 2017, he won. So for that reason, there is no way William Samai Ruto can defeat Raila Amolo Dinga once he has this backing. But Uhuru interest is that he needs someone in the Mount Kenya region to be in a powerful position in Raila Molo Dinga's government. So all these trips you see, One Kenya Alliance is making their way to State House in a series of meetings with President Uhuru Kenyatta confirms to you that Uhuru definitely is helping these guys to make sure that their campaign is well oiled. They have enough fuel in their cars and the resources they need on the ground. He don't care what amount of what they will get, but his plan is that this team should not work with William Samuel Root. That's why he's ready to fund them with the resources, resources, enough resources so that they can gain as enough what they might need to have in 2022 general election. And the game plan is to come together after that election in Arira, but not to back William Samway Root. That's why you see Uhuru is severely checking on them, calling them, having a closed door meeting with this team. And again, one important thing that Uhuru is also understanding is that he don't want to kill the political future of Kalonzo or Omsalem David. And many people believe that if Musalam Davadi can be on the ballot in 2022, then that is how he can serve his political future. If not, then Musalam Davadi can easily bury his political future after 2022 general election. So for that reason, see this being, is being seen as a front runner in one Kenya alliance. So, this move alone is offering an opportunity to one Musalem David to redeem himself in 2022. Such that if this formation will stay and assume Gideon Moy comes in with 300,000 votes. Senator Masika Watangula comes in with 200,000 votes. Kalonga Musyoka comes in with 1 million votes from Ukamban. The rest is the Raila now again. Then Amsalam Dabadi himself, since he will be a flag bearer, comes in with another million votes. Because now, having this team, we have a good number of lawyers who can believe in him. So it is easy for him to get one million. That alone will amount to 2.5 million votes. Remember, 
in 2013, Uhuru Kenyatta just got 50 plus 1 with 80,000 votes. If Musala Mdabad was not running, the vote that he got, Raila Mono Dinga could have got. And that, uh, that was enough to engineer a rerun in that election. Now this team is coming here with 2.5 million votes. In fact, even if they just get 1 million vote, is enough. I'm saying this, why? You see, IBC is now registering people. The target was about 3 million plus. But what have they registered? 800,000. Another question is, how many people have died since we had the last election? There are many. Maybe a million or a half. So, there is no new vote that you are saying that it will go, it's going to change the equation that we had in 2013 or 2017. For that reason, one can alliance coming with 1 million or 2.5 million, definitely these people will have a catch-up in 2027 election. So they can negotiate themselves to Raila Molodinga government through their number of votes for ministerial slots. For that reason, ANC will have their numbers there, Waipa, Kanu, and Ford Kenya. So, Raila will give a half of his government to one Kenya alliance. The remaining he is going to share with his running mate. And that is maybe the plan of President Uru Kenyatta, so that Mount Kenya region allies who are staying, who are with him, will have a space in Raila Mono Dinga's government. But if not, then why all this much struggle? It's simple. Bring one kind of alliance together and they are ready to go and win this election. But Mount Kenya region might lack slot in Raila Mono Dinga government if they go that way. Now, as I wind this in conclusion, the Mount Kenya Foundation are going to name their preferred presidential candidate. That person is one Raila Amolo Dinga who will be named, of course. So after that, President Uru Kenyatta and his team are going to provide resources to Raila Amolo Dinga, the logistics. The same president is going to help One Kenya Alliance raise enough resources and the logistics to have their campaign well strategized. So Uhuru Hand is going to be in all of these two sides. These guys are going to campaign up to the end. And after that, we are going to see what will happen in the end of that election. That's my own view. But again, in the comment section, you can give me your views. You don't need necessarily to agree with me. You can disagree with me, but constructively. Thank you so much for listening to me up to this far. May good God bless you. And see you in our next video.